In this video, I'm going to play as the dwarfs versus Agony Achilles playing as the Empire. I think this was my first battle as the dwarfs. In this battle, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I wanted to find out uh, how the dwarfs stacked up against the Empire. So, in retrospect, my army is hopeless. However, I want to say, I want to, now that I know more about the dwarves, I can explain why it's hopeless. So I just, I don't just want to post me winning, uh, because, um, believe it or not, I don't, in the end, I do play to win, uh, but I do also play to, to learn about how the game works, how the game functions. So my thinking with this army is I want to keep the Empire at range with my crawlers. I brought great weapons on them, which in retrospect, not really worth it, just to give them increased um, armor penetration. I have a bunch of these Dwarven Warriors, I have a bunch of Longbeards with great weapons, and uh, charge defense against large foes against these guys, uh, on these guys, which I figured would help me against the Demogriff Knights, but little did I know. Uh, I also have cannons, which I would probably never bring now. I have uh, just a standard axe lord, no heroes, and the um, uh, Achilles has brought four demogriff knights, no halberds this time because he's fighting the dwarfs, handgunners, three handgunners, then he has a line of six spears, a light wizard, a uh, witch hunter, and a flying, flying fellow. Flying Empire Captain. So, uh, w first of all, in this battle, I don't know how effective cannons are against flying units if they are able to hit them relatively easily. So, I'm trying to hit the uh, trying to hit the flying monster first. I should have focused on these Demogriff Knights right away because, um, yeah, they seem to be the greater threat at the moment. So I've wasted a few volleys now, and I'm going to turn my corridors to face the Demogriffs. Getting a few shots off here against the Demogriff Knights. Doing a bit of damage, actually, to the Demogriffs. Uh, but yeah, my cannon is continuing to miss, by, uh, to miss the flying captain here. So uh, I sh really should have focused on the Demogriff Knights, and now I'm going to start focusing on them. My army setup isn't the best either. And here comes the net of Amuntak, so uh, that means that these guys are unable to move. They are able to fire though, so they are firing on the handgunners and doing a lot of damage to the enemy handgunners. But this is the real problem, I can deal with this. Look at how quickly I'm killing the handgunners. This is the main problem. Uh, sending in my blocky longbeards with great weapons. Uh, big problem that I'm charging here because then their charge defense doesn't apply so I'm trying to blob up the demogriffs I'm trying to fire on this Empire Lord fellow here uh, magic being cast on my, the net of Amintak being used on my cannons uh, so the the demogriffs swing around charging my dwarves in the back there and I am doomed now my, uh, the demogriff knights uh, are going to get to my cannon only takes one charge like that to uh, to take down the cannon. I've done a fair bit of damage to the flyer here, but now my my corners are getting charged by spears. Great weapons are not going to help them that much in that engagement. The demogriffs have done a lot of damage to my uh, longbeards with great weapons. They've barely killed anything. Net of Vomintok being used once again to hold my dwarves in position. So I'm not able to uh, I'm not able to join these fights the way I want to. And bringing six skirmishers is something I normally would never do. But I just wanted to see uh, how good these skirmishers were with their great weapons. Uh, not that great, I'm afraid. Although their stats are not terrible. They lack the men of a normal or lack the dwarves of a normal uh, dwarf unit there. So Blood Roar being used to reduce my leadership together with Terror and Fear and losing combat means that even the sturdy Dwarfs are going to have morale problems. So it's, it's fairly obvious that in these sorts of fights what happens is that the, the Empire, uh, the dangerous Empire units, which are Demogriff Knights, 
uh, mainly Demogriff Knights and the the flying uh, flying dude. They mainly get almost killed the light wizard here with crossbows, I think. Uh, but th yeah, the, the main killing power of the empire needs to get bogged down. You need an abundance of, of infantry troops. So I'll show you in um, afterwards in talking about the dwarven army which which uh, choices I would make if I were to play this battle again. And here the witch hunter is standing around as well. And these handgunners are able to, of course, fire on key units. Doing a bit of damage to the demogriffs, but too little too late. The quarrelers are actually doing some damage to the demogriffs here. I'm sure they're being helped by these quarrelers over here. But yeah, the demogriffs, uh, I don't have a response to the demogriffs in this battle. Achilles is using them really well. I don't have enough infantry to blob up everything. The cannon should have fired on the demogriffs right away. And I probably should have used my quarrelers as second line rather than first line. Should have been more effective. My longbeards are breaking. My uh, little dwarven lord here isn't doing that well. I have no idea what he's doing now. And now he's killing something, but uh, not that effective. So this army, I'll just fast forward uh, because this is just the rest of my army disintegrating. A newbie army used in a noob way because I was a noob. At this point, Achilles had a lot more battles than I had, and uh, he basically knew that these guys are the shit. Look at the kills on. Uh, look at the kills on the spears. Uh, look at the kills on the Demogriff knights. The Demogriff knights carry the carry the army. So uh, let's have a look at the dwarven roster now. A look at uh, potential. Uh, some have potential dwarven armies. All of the dwarven lords have something in common. They have a lot of armor on them. Um, a lot of armor and uh, the, the weapon damage of all the lords pretty much the same. Charge defense against large, blah blah blah. What sets them apart is abilities for the most part. The dwarves have missile resistance here, magic resistance, uh, deadly onslaughts, foe seeker and stand your ground. If you take Ungrim, you get Death Blow, plus 8% Splash, uh, plus 8% AP, and that's basically the difference. He's unbreakable as well. Charge Defense versus Large, Magic Reserve, blah blah blah. So, uh, for he's not really that unique in my opinion. Torgrim, of course, uh, is the legendary Dwarven Lord. High King gives plus 8 melee attack, plus 4 charge bonus, and immune to psychology in 250 meters range, which is quite decent. Then we have the Thane, supporting uh, hero, which has deadly onslaught and foe seeker. The master engineer can buff the ballistics of the, uh, uh, ballistics of the empire. And the runesmith, uh, he's basically a spellcaster. The rune of negation increases damage resistance, can be exceptionally useful in some situations. Uh, the rune of oath and steel plus 15 armor can be useful. The rune of wrath and ruin can be very good, very good against uh, enemy units like Demogriff Knights. So if you were to pick any of these guys, I would uh, ungrim and uh, the runesmith probably. And in terms of infantry, you have the miners, armor piercing, uh, high armor piercing damage, but the, but they do have quite a, a bit of armor in the leadership, very slow units, not terrible in the least, but they do have low melee attack and melee defense. You can see the dwarf warriors have a lot, uh, have a lot better stats aside from the armor piercing. And then we have the miners with blasting charges, an interesting unit, the missile, uh, the blasting missiles, have uh, 30 explosive damage and 12 AP uh, together with one missile damage and one armor piercing and uh, a volley from these guys it, it looks very very impressive but it's it's not hugely effective it can be nice it can be fun so on and so forth uh, dwarven warriors reasonably cost effective reasonably sturdy high armor shielded with great weapons they have higher armor penetration cost more 
long beards, an upgrade from the um, dwarf warriors. Get a bit more armor. You get uh, a bit more health. Uh, you get pretty good morale. Uh, but the, the the damage potential on these units is is not great. They are immune to psychology, fear, and terror, which is good. They do encourage, which can be useful. Um, then we have the longbeards with great weapons. Same thing. They get more armor penetration and they become less sturdy defensively. The hammerers, uh, the hammerers, one of the highest damage for uh, highest damage values for a two-handed weapon unit. Very high melee attack, but the price is absolutely insane on this unit. Twelve hundred for an infantry unit uh, with a hammer. Then we have the iron breakers. The iron breakers throw a satchel with explosives, range of fifty-five. Um, good leadership, good armor, very high health, but once again. An extremely expensive unit charge defense against all and it's really weird that all of the dwarves have aside from the slayers have so I forgot to talk about the slayers uh, pretty high leadership there uh, they have the death blow unbreakable blah 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 uh, good against large but very expensive vulnerable to missiles and they have uh, they they do have um, for some reason they do have a 25% missile block chance. Now, going over the missile infantry, we have the quarrelers, the quarrelers with great weapons, essentially the same unit, uh, but this unit is better defensively and it's armored and shielded, which means it gets a missile block chance. Very useful like in skirmish trades. Same thing with this dude here. Uh, the thunderers, the iron drakes, I haven't used them as much as the other, other units because of the price and the relatively low range. I have tested them in campaign and run a few single tests with them. They can do a lot of damage, but they are very expensive and very easy to counter. Now for the Dwarven Artillery and War Machines, you do expect something special. The Flame Cannon is good, but very expensive. The Gyro Bomber is good, but very expensive. Notice a theme here. The Organ Gun is good, but very expensive. Uh, so are the gyrocopters. The gyrocopters are a direct counter to, to the demigriff spam without any ranged support. Uh, but of course, just going for a complete gyrocopter army is cheesy as hell. It works, uh, you can have some fun with it, but your uh, opponent is not going to have any fun with it. But then again, against demigriff spam, you're probably not going to have that much fun either. So, um, what could a typical Dwarven army look like? Well, you have a few different options. You can go, of course it's going to be mainly infantry in all cases. You could go with a relatively cheap infantry setup. So relatively cheap infantry setup brings Dwarven warriors, brings... This is, I know it's wrong to talk about a Dwarven rush, but this is sort of a Dwarven uh, Dwarven Rush Army with some, some missile defense thrown in for good measure. Um, some quarrelers. And for the remaining funds, uh, you can either have some... It can be, since you're so slow with the Dwarves, it can be good to have some some uh, missiles. Or you can just bring the Rune Smith. The cool thing about the Rune Smith is that he doesn't use magic. He uses runes. So these will keep... Uh, they will keep uh, regenerating. Uh, or, uh, I mean, keep uh, keep uh, keep cooling down. Uh, this is a potential Dwarven army you could uh, you could bring. Uh, the Quarrelers will stop you from getting kited to death from by enemy skirmishers, because these are pretty damn good skirmishers. And uh, the Longbeards and Dwarf Warriors will need to swarm enemy units, envelop them in order to do enough damage, or in order to be able to do some damage and force the enemy to come to you, miners with blasting charges can be fun. Uh, they can't attack air, but what they can do is, as they can act as the first line, throw their satchels, the dwarf warriors or longbeards go in and hold, and now then the miners with blasting charges m move around the sides and uh, start throwing their blasting charges on big nasties or what have you. Or, let's see, Dwarf Warriors with great weapons. If you need more 
armor penetrating power. I have to say I've rarely found the use f found use for the more expensive dwarven units. Now, it can be a good thing to have some uh, long beards, for example, with great weapons. Uh, the, the, but so the problem is that you have such a low charge bonus on, on your units uh, that you can do something like this as well, but then you're in danger of getting kited to death and you have very few things. I've seen some battles and played some battles where the bane of the dwarven army becomes enemy missile troops on foot. And even if you have, even if you bring a sort of a lore friendly classical Dwarven army. Let's see what that could look like. You could have for example, you could have uh, Grudge throwers Grudge thrower you have a few gyrocopters. This is just setting up an army. That's fun and uh, sort of lore friendly A few dwarven warriors a few long beards a slayer in there a hammer uh, You can tell right away that this isn't going to be the greatest army ever fielded So once you start bringing in the elites once you start bringing the gyrocopters and the artillery you're left with a an incredibly small army and let's say you're playing against the orcs and the goblins and the orcs and the goblins do their thing they bring the uh, they bring Asag they bring uh, a bunch of boys they bring a bunch of uh, let's see because they know that these guys are not going to get chased down by the by the I've done this a few times myself uh, a few Goblin Wolf Riders, maybe two is enough actually, and uh, a few, a few big ones, and let's just have five of these, and then two Black Orcs. It's just as an example. I could even afford something more, but Asag flies around, uses his Spirit Leech. The Orc Boys move in together with the Orc Big ones and the Black Orcs. The Goblin Archers run in and take a lot of fire. All the while. Goblin Wolf Riders are sneaking in to either flank the skirmish line of the Dwarves or to get at the war machines of the Dwarves. It's not easy being a Dwarf in Total War Warhammer. And the Dwarves might, might be one of the weaker factions. I've yet seen the Dwarves used to great effect aside from the infamous Gyrocopter spam by, by Panda Warrior. Strength and Honor.